I'm making a guess that if you're viewing this Contact 5 New Features Explained course, then you are already a user of Contact, and probably using Contact 4, and looking to update to Contact 5. And because I'm assuming this, then you will know that Contact 4 has always had a good selection of filters that you can employ. In fact, if you look at another Groove 3 course, the Contact 4 Explained course, you'll see their implementation and function was addressed there. Therefore, I won't dwell on the existing filters. Here, in this tutorial, I want to provide an overview of what the new filters are capable of in this version, Contact 5. There are quite a number of new filters, so for this particular tutorial, I'll talk about them in terms of categories. Then, over the course of the next few tutorials, I'll look at these categories in more individual detail. Therefore, for this particular tutorial, I'm not going to be going through all the different filters one by one and simply pressing a key on the keyboard so that you can hear a note each time. As you know, that's not really going to give you much information about how these filters work. That said, we will be listening to the filters in the next couple of tutorials, but for the moment in this tutorial, we're not going to. So either dive ahead into the next couple of tutorials if you want to hear the sounds, or if you're only interested in what these filters sound like without any real information, if you go to Native Instruments website, you can download a demo so that you can audition them yourself. So as I say, there are quite a number of new filters, so for this particular tutorial, I'll talk about them in terms of categories, and then over the course of the next few tutorials, I'll look at these categories in more individual detail. Now as you remember, as mentioned in the previous tutorial, the filters can be categorised into SV, or state variable filters, and then I regard these filters, the SV filters, as the new standard for contact, in that they are cleaner than their legacy filters. There are new ladder filters too, which are based on the types found in older synthesizers. These ladder filters provide improved algorithms too. Additionally, these ladder filters provide a high quality oversampling option, but at the expense of a marginally higher CPU overhead. Although to be honest, I think today's doors are capable of running that extra hit without too much problem though. Contact 5 also introduces AR filters, adaptive resonance filters. These filters work by adjusting how much resonance occurs and determined by the amplitude of the input. The real-world consequence of this means the resonance volume is controlled or tamed in a similar way as if you integrated a dynamic limiter that modified the volume output so that it never peaked too high. You'll also find the antithesis of these adaptive resonance filters in the form of the daft low-pass and high-pass filters that have been brought in, or borrowed shall we say, from their use within NI's massive soft synth. These filters I suppose allow for much more sonic mayhem in that their resonance can be forced into self-oscillation. I want to give you a little more information about these new filters now so that you can understand how they create their individual sonic signature on your sounds. I'll start off by talking about the SV filters, the state variable filters. NI declare these are their new standard filters because they are very clean sounding, i.e. they don't impose a particular strong colouring of sound and consequently can be used on any material that you use in contact, be it to filter the output of a synth or to filter your own samples. Moving on, ladder filters are interesting in that synthesizers from the past, such as the Moog RS100, well synths like this utilise this type of filter and gets its name, i.e. a ladder filter, from the schematic of the filter circuit. In particular, the Moog filter used a circuit called a ladder network, its filter response was emulated by other filters too, but what made it significant was there was a slight flaw in the design that caused a small amount of distortion. You'd imagine, I suppose, that Moog would have tried to correct this. However, Bob Moog chose to let it remain because he found the slight distortion to be musically pleasing. And in fact, the actual term, ladder filter, as I said before, gets its name from the filter circuit schematic because it's based on two symmetrical cascades of four transistors with a capacitor in between each pair of transistors. And you'll find these ladder filters in your low pass, band pass, high pass, peak and notch. And as its history indicates, ladder filters used in contact, therefore, are a good choice when employed on synthetic sounds, but NI state that they can be used on any signal with success. Now speaking of suggestions, NI suggests that their AR filters, the adaptive resonance filters, NI suggests these are best used on drums, 
loops, or even full mix material. And this is because AR filters work dependent on the level pumped into them. If a high input level is detected, the filter's resonance is attenuated and consequently undesirably distorted peaks are controlled. You might know NI's soft synth Massive. If you do, you'll know it utilised its own filter collection. Within Contact 5, you can employ these, what are known as daft filters, if you want to produce an aggressive synth sound. Anyway, that's enough background information, albeit designed to give you a heads up on what the filters will do to your contact sounds. So now let's move forward and look at using them.